Okay, guys, uh, welcome to this week's lesson. Um, we're going to be looking at traveling waves this week, um, which follows on nicely from our work on simple harmonic motion. Uh, if you haven't guessed, a traveling wave is one that travels. So it's moving. Um, and, well, why the link with simple harmonic motion? I guess let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Where are my arrows not working? I'll do it on the screen. I'm having computer issues today. Okay, so here's a wave. Uh, should look very familiar from work done really as long ago as S3. We've got a wave traveling from left to right um, with a speed C. So I'm guessing this is an electromagnetic wave. Um, and you can see that energy is being transferred along. We can see that the crests of the wave are moving along. We can see there is a distance between the crests, which we are well familiar with and we call the wavelength. But let's look a little bit more closely now. So we would have spoke uh, during National 5 while looking at transverse waves, and we would have said that actually, although the wave is moving left to right, that the, the medium isn't. And if we look at the particles in this medium, so the medium is oscillating, and each particle is actually undergoing simple harmonic motion. So we can model the motion of any one of those particles just using the work we've already done on simple harmonic motion. And in fact, all the particles are undergoing simple harmonic motion. The only difference between the particles is they're um, at different points on the wave at different times. So there's a phase difference, which we're going to call phi, the Greek letter phi, which is this bad boy here, if you're not familiar with it. So there's a phase difference between each point on the wave. But they all have the same amplitude of oscillation. They all have the same period and therefore frequency and angular frequency. The only thing that's different is just the phase. So how can we model that? Um, I can't actually remember why I included this, but it's fun to play with. So go and have a play with it when you want. Uh, let's have a look at the phase difference. So, so in order to do this, we have to consider two points on the wave. So let's just consider any two random points. So I'm going to look at this diagram here in a second. But the position of that point is, and in the y direction, is going to depend on two things. It's going to depend on how far along the x axis it is, and it's going to depend on time. Okay, so let's imagine that these points are separated by a distance x. Well, if the distance x was equal to a full wavelength, so if they were one wavelength apart, then these two particles would be in phase. And they'd be, they'd be in phase because if particle one was a crest and they're one wavelength apart, then particle two would also have to be at the top of the crest. So we can look at this in terms of ratios. So x over lambda here is the fraction of a wavelength, you know, how, how far apart they are expressed in terms of a fraction of a wavelength. So then the phase angle phi, well, what's the angular difference between two crests? Well, it's 2 pi. And I know we haven't really done the rotational motion section yet properly, but you should be familiar with this from maths anyway. So the two crests on the wave are 2 pi radians apart. So this is the same thing in the angular motion. So this is the fraction of one wavelength in the linear distance, and this is a fraction of one complete wave in an angle. And we're just looking at the ratio, so we can then multiply 2 pi across. So therefore, the, dis the difference in phase between two particles that are separated by a distance x is just 2 pi x over lambda. So if you don't really follow where it comes from, don't worry, you've got a formula. Um, delta here means difference in, so change in. So the difference in phase between particles P and Q is 2 pi, x, 2 pi delta x, so the distance between them over the wavelength of the wave. Measured in radians again. Okay, so let's have a look at the traveling wave equation then. So from our work on simple harmonic motion, this uh, should probably make a little bit of sense. So basic equation for a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion is y equals a sine omega t. Now, because we're going to have to model all the particles on the wave, our function should have a time dependence and a phase dependence. 
Well, let's get rid of the phi. So we've already established that phi equals 2 pi x over lambda. So our equation now becomes y equals a sine omega t minus 2 pi x over lambda. Uh, let's get rid of the omega as well. Well, we know omega equals 2 pi f. Um, so I'm not going to read that out because it's a big long equation, but you should notice in the two parts of the equation inside the parentheses, there is a factor of 2 pi. So we can actually take that outside the parentheses to make our traveling wave equation y equals a sine 2 pi ft minus x over lambda. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, you basically need to be able to understand what it's telling us, interpret it, and use it. Now, it's worth noting, of course, that we're talking about sine waves and we're talking about phase. So equally well, it could be in the form y equals a cos 2 pi ft minus x over lambda, because the difference between sine and cos is only phase, isn't it? Um, let's have a look at energy. Energy of a wave is determined by its amplitude. Well, um, the energy is related to the amplitude squared. So if it's proportional to the amplitude squared, we could say that E equals some constant, which we don't know, uh, times the F squared. Um, and we can work with that. We've also got energy from SHM equals half M omega squared A squared. So it's worth knowing because it's a square relationship, if a wave has twice the height, if we double the height of a wave, we're actually quadrupling the energy of the wave. Um, and a wave with three times the height is going to have nine times the energy. So shall we have a wee look at an example then? Okay, so wave direction is also built in. So in this case, we have a minus sign because the wave is moving from left to right. Well, why is that? Well, if we take this crest here, well, this crest was here at some point in the past, and it's moving towards the right. Well, in that case, P was the first particle to move. So P moved before Q moved. So that gives us the relationship between them as being negative. If the wave's traveling in the opposite direction, we don't have to do anything more fancy. We just change this to a plus. Right, here's our example then. Okay, a wave travels along a string is represented by the relationship. Big long formula. Okay. Show that the frequency of the wave is 147 hertz. So I've already written this out so you don't have to watch me writing very much. So let's have a look. Well, the first thing to note, let's have a look. In our equation that we've just derived, we have this factor of 2 pi here. Now, when we go back to the question, there is no factor of 2 pi. So the SQA, bless their cotton socks, who like to give you plenty of opportunity to muck up. Um, have included the two pi terms within the the content of the brackets. So what we say then is this value 922, well, to get the actual value, we have to divide two pi out of it. So F equals 922 divided by two pi gives this complicated number. Now, I think I've said this quite a few times already, but I'll say it again. Remember the SQA, like your show this questions to have your answer exactly much match there. So I've written 147 Hertz to uh, match their 147 Hertz here. Okay, the next step is to determine the speed of the wave. Well, um, let's go back to the equation. We have to look at this part here so remember that in our traveling wave equation, this is equal to x over lambda. So we've got to use this part here. So x over lambda, and we've got the factor of 2 pi as well. So 2 pi x over lambda equals 4.5x. And then we're just on a, a job of simplification. The two x's cancel out. And we've got some numbers in pi and lambda. And we can calculate that, that lambda is therefore equal to 1.4 meters. Okay, the final part. The wave loses energy as it travels along the string. 
at one point, the energy of the wave has decreased to one eighth of its original value. Calculate the amplitude of the wave. So the energy is decreased by to one eighth of its original value. What's the new amplitude? Well, the first thing we have to do is what is the original amplitude? Well, that's here. It's nine point five. So that's we've clocked that. Oh dear! And I've just noticed that in my worked value, I've made a mistake. It's nine point five times ten to the four. So we'll have to go back and correct that in a minute. So. Here is our approach. Well, we know that energy is proportional to the amplitude squared. So a bit like the gas laws in National 5, um, because E equals Ka, then we can do E1 over A1 squared is equal to E2 over A2 squared, because E1, the energy divided by the amplitude is equal to a constant, or the amplitude squared. But we know that E2 is an eighth of E1. So we can substitute that in to the value for E2. Um, so E1 over A1 squared equals E1 divided by 8 A2 squared, because that's our factor of an eighth of E1. Therefore, we can rearrange that, because E1 obviously cancels out on both sides. Rearrange that A2 equals A1 squared over 8. And herein lies my problem. I think it was 9.5 times 10 to the 4, wasn't it? Yeah, 9.5 times 10 to the 4. So let's fix this. Where's my working? All right, now I'm going to have to get my calculator out. So 9.5 x minus 4. And I'm going to square that. I'm going to divide by 8. And I'm going to take my square root. Oh, what went wrong? 9.5 x minus 4 squared divided by 8. And I'm getting, yeah, 3.35875 da, 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 to the minus 4. So I'm going to round that. I've got a minimum of two significant figures. So I'm going to round that to 3.4 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Job done. There we go. Hopefully that's fixed. Um, points for pointing out mistakes as usual, though. OK. Um, I think that's enough for this week. Um, I'll leave the stationary waves for, for next week's lesson. Um, as always, any questions, um, give me a shout and uh, we'll catch up with you soon.